Sometime during the last two hours, Clark Griswold has stopped feeling cold. He claws at the frozen ground, vaguely aware of the intensifying blizzard. He holds up his mangled hand and watches the blood spiral down his frostbitten fingers like candy canes. Clark stands up, throws his arms around a tree, and heaves upwards in a desperate attempt to uproot it. His arms quake. Something in his knee pops, but the pain seems distant. The tree budges. It's almost unnoticeable. He drops to his, to his knees. A Christmas carol en- enters his head, and he hums it flat. His family waits in the car, but they'll just have to keep on waiting. He's happy he forgot the saw. This is more fun anyway. Back home, Clark dons the hockey mask and fires up the chainsaw. Margot and Todd, Clark's rich neighbors, step out of their expensive car and look upon Clark's uprooted tree with disgust. They shift their attention from the tree to him. There's no fear in their faces, as he had hoped. Instead, unmistakable looks of pity. Clark tells Margot that he would like to sodomize her with the tree. (laughs) Through some bleak consolidation of plot, because for Clark, life has just become a series of predetermined actions and sight gags, his parents and in-laws arrive at the house at the same time. They fill his house with the din of minutia. He watches his son Rusty strategically avoid his mother-in-law. Clark wishes he could be like that, or at least be more assertive. Mostly, he wishes he could retreat within, within the sappy branches of that all-encompassing tree. He wants to back into it, pull the prickly arms around him, disappear, and watch how awful everyone's Christmas would be without him. Clark escapes the family, by hanging Christmas lights. He stands atop the unsteady ladder and pounds staples into the trim, sometimes without even aiming for the lights. There are so many lights to hang. His hand aches from squeezing the handle, but he's on a roll. He punches staples out so fast that he doesn't even feel the staple pin him to the roof. Shit, he says, with a dead resolve of a man who has stapled himself to a house too many times before. He tries to yank himself free. His numb rage strengthens his efforts, and the force carries him away from the roof. The sleeve of his shirt rips off, still stapled to the trim, hanging like flaccid genitalia, and he tips back, clutching the ladder, sailing, flying until his back impacts against the tree. Pain climbs his spine like a string of lit firecrackers. He holds onto the top rung 30 feet off the ground and waits for the moment when his hands give. When, the, when he falls to the snow-packed ground to break his neck, for, the, for that brief moment, it's the only thing he wants for Christmas. <laughs> the pain subsides. It never truly goes away. And Clark pushes himself off the tree, back to the roof, back to the lights, forever the lights. Everything in the mall appears to waver. Clark's vision dances like he's looking over the top of a fire a fever dream of products and people. Heat squeezes sweat out of his pores like a teenager poking through acne. He stumbles over to a lingerie display, braces himself against the glass. An attractive woman with a low-cut shirt asks if she can show him something. Show him something! Yowza! Who dug it? Hamana, hamana, hamana. <laughs> Clark fumbles with his language. Unintentional, witless, sexual innuendo laces his words. He admits to smelling the panties. Pity crosses the woman's face, barely disguised with the commission earning smile, but pity all the same. Clark doesn't care. Everybody pities Clark. No shit, he says to no one in particular. Clark looks for a place to hide an armful of empty, empty boxes he's wrapped to look like presents. These are the gifts to himself alibis to slink into obscurity. He pulls the string to unleash the attic stairs, but fails to move fast enough. The stairs slide into his face, and the sound of his cartilage breaking is like the boot crunching through snow. He locks himself in the attic and watches old home videos on a projector. When the film ends, he stares at a flickering white square for hours. Eddie, Clark's wife's cousin's husband, Shows up to their house uninvited. He smells of shit and dog food. (laughs) Grease coats his skin, giving him a permanent sheen. 
Eddie's family is a feral clan of half-breeds, and he openly admits to, dr to dropping them into wells for his own amusement. He is the only man still capable of riling Clark's own deteriora deteriorating moral compass because he does not fit into the scale of naughty or nice. Rather, he's a perversion of it, a wild card with a dangerous ability to mask a conniving brain with an air of buffoonery. <laughs> Clark pours eggnog into two, into two frosted moose-shaped cups while Eddie wanders around in a yellow thermals that obscenely hug everything below his gut. Eddie drinks the nog with the approximation of class, but his thick-throated gulping makes Clark want to vomit. Eddie's beast of a dog drinks from the Christmas tree water, and when Clark protests, Eddie leans in close and says, He's cute, ain't he? Only problem is, and the way he says problem tells Clark that this isn't a problem for the dog, but for anyone who isn't the dog. <laughs> He's got a little bit of Mississippi leg hound in him. If the moon catches him right, he'll grab your leg and just go to town. Word of warning, though, if he does lay into you, it's just best to let him finish. Eddie tips his moose back and chases the threat with three thick gulps. Later that night, Clark hallucinates a pool in his backyard. The snow is gone. The cold is gone. He watches as his family re reaps the rewards of his soul-crushing efforts to give them a good old-fashioned family Christmas. Eddie. 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 Oh, Eddie. Climbs onto the diving board wearing his shit-stained underwear as a bathing suit. He readies himself for a cannonball, and Clark will give anything not to have to watch Eddie soil his new pool with an ass first dive. <laughs> and, as if granted his wish, Eddie turns into the beautiful brunette from the mall. <laughs> Here she is, rising out of the pool with her red top. Eddie's so hot, Clark thinks. Hoops, Freudian nip slip. Hamana, hamana, hamana. <laughs> Eddie's daughter walks into the kitchen to find Clark touching himself to the sight of snow falling outside. <laughs> Christmas Eve, the turkey's overcooked, the insides dry like an H.R. Geiger painting. Clark swallows a jagged piece of meat that shreds his throat all the way down. He excuses himself from the table to electrocute a cat. <laughs> Clark laughs. He can't take it anymore. His dad tells him that he's gone goofy. Everyone stands to leave. Clark becomes wild-eyed. No way, not now. Black dots cloud his peripheral. His family becomes a pinprick that fades into the distance like they're disintegrating. His own voice sounds far away, faint from the sound of the blood vessels cracking in his eyes and a migraine blooming in his skull. The headache spreads across his face, gives him the feeling of warmth and, oh my God, it's the hap, hap, happiest Christmas since Bean Crosby tap danced with Danny fucking K. <laughs> Hours later, he realizes that, provoked by the ranting of Clark's delirium, Eddie has kidnapped Clark's boss and that they've been torturing him for some time. <laughs> a SWAT team breaks through the door. Officers swing through the windows. The breaking glass is a song to Clark. They force him on the floor, but they are too late. The air in the house has become thick with methane and Eddie, from Eddie's shit, the shit he dumped from his RV. This is Clark's deliverance from a world of shit. Seems appropriate. Great Uncle Lewis strikes a match to light his stogie. The flames lift him upward, and he returns to the world as ashes. The fire rips his wife apart. Rusty's eyes drip out. Audrey's skin boils. Eddie, Eddie howls as skin tightens two sizes too small and peels back to reveal blackened skin. This is the Christmas Clark has been waiting for. I did it, he says. I did it. And then the fire embraces him too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>